Welcome, welcome, welcome to Orchids for Dummies. <gasps> A place where you can get your life. Now, fell pals, in today's video, I will be giving you guys an update on my sick, dehydrated, and rootless phalaenopsis, okay? These are the ones that I have had in recovery for the past month or two. Stay tuned. All right, fell pals. Now, welcome, seriously. Let's go ahead and get this over with, darling. We gonna have a good time in the process of dealing with this sickness, death, and defeatness, honey. Okay, now this is an orchid that I have been struggling with forever and ever, ever, and ever, ever. And I wanted to document it, but for the longest, I was suspecting that maybe it wasn't growing anything because it had some type of powdery residue between the leaves. And I really, truly believe that that powder residue was, in fact, going to be some cinnamon. So that's why I really don't like to use cinnamon because anything could happen. I mean, it, I did not even know. But whenever, when, as soon as I washed it away, that's when I started to get this new leaf growth, okay? But if it wasn't for this leaf growth, I would give up on this orchid. This leaf is firm, but as you can see, it's so dehydrated. And no matter what I do, it's as if it just will not hydrate at all. Now, the roots, um, what I am going to do is going to be for another video, but I'm basically going to pull the um, shelling of the roots off and just leave that thin exposed part of the root. And hopefully that will help me with the white moss. I mean mold, because that is what I am dealing with, the white mold. And this right here is turning into black mold because I'm leaving it in there longer than what I normally would. And that's because this poor orchid needs some type of hydration in order to produce this leaf. This orchid's life is on the line, okay? It's on the line. Also, I started using smaller glasses. I'm trying to do my part to make America beautiful again. So instead of throwing these glass containers away, I am now reusing them to do water culture on my sick, dehydrated, and rootless phalaenopsis. Yes, ma'am, Pam. First up on the list is my phalaenopsis that I am most proud of and honestly have had the longest and honestly one of the few orchids that I actually bought myself. Now, you guys know that I had to remove that black mold off of her. I used a toothbrush. I got a lot of flat from it. I even told you guys in that video that um, I was unsuccessful the last time because I missed a step by taking too long. Now, this orchid right here, um, she was potted into something else. Now, she was um, starting to get that white mold on her. So I had to change out the moss, put her in fresh moss. Ever since I changed her out, put her in that fresh moss, these new roots have really taken off, okay? Now, she has a root somewhere in this pot that is actually maintaining her and also giving her a little bit of stability to keep to keep her from falling right outside of the pot. I'm, I don't know where that root is. I guess whatever that root is down up in there. But the ones that you can see is right here. Now, the reason that these leaves are so small for my new beginners is because this orchid has been set back. It is now in a life and death process, trying to do its best to make sure that it's able to survive. Now, because she has these beautiful root tips, she's growing in this beautiful moss in this greatly ventilated pot. I have styrofoam down here at the bottom because anytime that you have an orchid that has no roots but you're dealing with moss, at the bottom of the pot, the moss will become compacted and it'll just hold too much moisture at the bottom of the pot. That's actually what happened to her. So 
That's what I had to do to keep from getting that white fuzzy mold, snow mold, at the bottom of my pie. Also, remember, because these roots are so small, I am still not giving her any fertilizer solution. I am feeding her with organic foods, such as broken eggshells. Now, if you guys have not seen that video, I will leave an info card above. But I would say that she's doing just fine. The leaves have definitely perked up. She was very dehydrated and the leaves were all wrinkly. Now it's all plush and green. So what do you say? Do you think I did a good job? I don't know. You tell me. Stay tuned. Okay, pal, pal. So up next is an orchid that is very precious to me because it was given to me from my physician. This was the first orchid that someone from the outside said, hey, um, you take care of orchids? I bet you can't bring this back to life. Her exact words were, if you bring this back to life, honey, you really are a wonderful orchid grower. So, honey, um, she is living her best life. That's a new root, boo-boo kitty. That's a new root, boo-boo kitty. Um, I don't see any more viable, um, not viable, but any more roots that I can show you off, offhand because she's in this pot. And remember that she is sick. I don't want to mess with her too much. But, um, she has grown, um... Um, at least two or three good roots that I'm able to fertilize, but I'm still um, easy on the fertilizer. I'm feeding her with those organics until she gets um, better roots, okay? I'm also still doing that fertile um, foliar feeding, okay? That's why her leaves are still so green. Now, um, I had her doing water culture, but she started to lose her bottom leaves, so I had to put her in some sphagnum moss so she will continually have that um, hydration around her. But um, she's still here, so I don't see any reason to think that she would die. This is another leaf that has been, well, I don't know if it's set back because it still could be growing, but typically when it comes out real big and round like that, that does mean that it's set back, so. Uh, we will have to stay tuned, but this leaf right here is wrinkly. Um, she is pulling nutrients from it, so that is why I have to make sure that I foliar feed her so she is not pulling nutrients only from her bottom leaves, okay? And remember, potassium is not an element that is going to go from um, one um, leaf to the next. I'm sorry, not potassium, but calcium. But yes, fail pals. One last orchid, honey. This one is the one that I'm most upset about because, honey, she has given me a flower spike and I was so excited. However, I believe one of my fail pals, um, I don't, I can't say her name because her name has an emoji, but she told me that the Phalaenopsis have short attention spans, meaning that they typically like to do one thing at a time. Because she is focusing all of her attention on this flower spike, baby. She is saying, I don't care about my roots and I don't care about my leaves. All I care about is getting out these new blooms so I can get pollinated, honey, and make me some babies, okay? Now, Fel Pels, um, she is still, she's still here. No new roots. Still reco recovering from that black mold. Um, that terminal spike is um, absolutely okay. So the only thing that I need to do to this orchid is to cut the spike and give her some time. She would definitely be doing a winter rest and hopefully she will make it through the winter and survive. Now, Fal Pals, I thank you guys so much for staying tuned to the People's Channel. Now, if you don't think Mama out here saving Phalaenopsis orchids, which are the hardest orchids to grow, in my opinion, honey, well, you gotta keep staying tuned because, honey, the proof is definitely in the pudding. Until next time, baby.